Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Jerby Apiary. It's time to make a new hive. This beehive is called the Cathedral Hive. It's hexagonal in shape. It is a top bar hive and the bees free comb it. They kind of build all their own honeycomb on their own and it makes these really nice hexagon looking combs. And I'm hoping that this approach is going to work. I do like the offbeat hives or the less mainstream hives, just because I like to experiment and try different things. These are the top bars that this Cathedral Hive uses that they build their comb off of. And it has these ventilation holes at the top and on the sides where the bees can use that as a highway to also move through the hive in addition to circulating air. This hive did come unassembled. They did cut most of the pieces already, but there are a number of different steps involved in order to get it to assemble and align correctly, such as building a jig for the sides for both the top and the bottom pieces. And it's gonna be really interesting to see how this comes out. Some of these woodworking things I've done before, others I haven't really, so this will be a little bit of an experiment and learning experience just from an assembly standpoint alone. And to build the jig, you need to use three quarter inch plywood, get some two befores for the sides and also some two befores for the middle uprights so that you can align everything. And we'll get into that more as we go through. Quick square really is pretty much my favorite carpentry tool. Now this first cut, I just kind of free cut it because it didn't have to be perfect for the length. You know, for a freehand cut, I'll take it. Now on to the important width. This second cut needed to be more specific, so I used a guide. Circular saw is placed in the guide, and this just helps to keep a nice straight cut. And kind of as I stated, you really want this width to be spot on because it helps with the alignment of the entire hive body, top and bottom both. After doing that, you need to attach your side mounts, which are your supports, as you will see. First, I marked about three quarters of an inch from the top so I knew where to line things up, and then I did some dry fitting with some clamps. Having a friend come over is a tremendous help for this so that you can get your hands freed in order to work on this together and get the sides glued up and put together and clamped. After your sides of the jig are on, it's good to cut some spaces for your support and end caps so that you can get those glued on and screwed in without having to take the whole thing apart. A reason why I like the quick square, there's so many different uses, like finding the center line on this board. You just mark your angles on both sides and then bring it down the middle and you're done. Where does that apply? Right there, lining it up on the center line. Our jig is complete. We have our center uprights on and we can start putting together the sides. Initial side alignment showed a little bit of wobble, but we knew that that would get sucked in once we used the ratchet straps to bring the whole thing together. So the next step on this process was to get everything glued up since these parts aren't screwed directly together, place them together using the jig so that the alignment is correct, and then using ratchet straps to pull everything together and keep it clamped tight until the glue dries. And again, having a friend come over helps tremendously for these processes. This is the assembled jig with sides, and you can see how that middle upright keeps things supported. And this is the side supports going on, which we could do because we cut those notches on the side rails. You do want your ends to be smooth so that the end caps will fit flush, so we used a hand planer for that, which worked very nice. And here is your fully secured top half of the hive. The next overall step is to place your end caps on. That's a matter of gluing it, clamping it down so that everything's lined up nice, and then screwing it into place. You essentially use the same process for making the bottom half of the hive, except for there's no side supports that are added to it. It's a matter of clamping, gluing, ratchet strapping, and then planing the sides. Back over to the top half of the hive, you put on some T11 siding for a roofing structure. Place screens over the ventilation holes of the subroof so that the other insects of the world don't come in and invade your hive. And then place the cedar shake roof, which is just a simple overlapping design that has an end piece that goes on the top, which is a nice copper strip that makes a ridge line. An accent overlap board is placed on the end pieces at the top of the hive that acts as an overlap to go over the bottom of the hive when you put the lid on. Speaking of the bottom of the hive, it's time to glue and place the end pieces that are on the front and back of the hive, and it's the same as on the top part. You glue, clamp, screw into place. And this is what the mostly finished product looks like. There is a glass side window that exists on this hive, which is kind of neat, so you can look up in, and that requires placement of two holding brackets and a catch that'll just keep it in place. 
And here's your open hive with all the top bars in place. One last bit of assembly is for the false back. And other than that, it's time to paint it. And I'll show you how I stain this in my next video. Remember to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.